saffron. It's the crop we are most eagerly awaiting every April and it's happening now, but it's happening one flower at a time. And as I'm speaking to you, we've only had three flowers. Every afternoon, I uh, go down and just see if there's anything likely to come up overnight. The flowers come out so quickly that once you see a flower bud, you know that it'll be ready to pick later the same morning. Steve's been working hard pulling out all of the old tomatoes in the garden bed so the garlic can go in. There were actually some still ripening on the vines so we hung the vines up underneath the carport and I in fact picked a whole bowl of them just recently. I just love watching this footage of Steve planting the garlic because I didn't realise that our local magpie has taken a great interest, well, maybe not so much in the vegetables, but in what gets dug up when Steve's doing the work. This afternoon I've got some broad beans to put into the ground. We normally try and get them in a little bit earlier than this, but we shouldn't have any problem. They'll grow over winter quite slowly. And what we're going to do is we're going to plant them in between some of the brassicas we've already planted because they'll be used up before the time the broad beans get to their full growth. Our overnight temperatures haven't gotten below zero just yet, but as you can see from our Vietnamese mint, it doesn't care. Um, two degrees has been cold enough for it, it's packing it in for the season. Uh, the trick with these is just to leave the vegetation as it is. Uh, I know for some people it just looks unsightly, but all of this um, brown leaves and everything will actually protect the plant underneath so that it will continue to stay alive during the winter period. It's at a nice sunny spot but it's probably a bit exposed for that so I'm going to swap it with another tub which is my tub of spring onions which you can just see. These are the ones I plant, purchased at the Lennon plant there.
to be doing a lot of repotting at the moment and this big raised bed of strawberries is a case in point as you can see from all of the vegetation it's red it's mottled it's got spots it's dying it's basically got quite a heavy virus load and I haven't cleaned this planter out for two years now coming off it and lots and lots of new strawberry plants I'm going to take these runners pick the best ones I can find cut the runners off I'll stick them in a tub of water for the time being clean clean all the strawberries out fill it up with new compost and then I'm going to replant the other strawberries Here to pick uh, the tomatoes or the ripened tomatoes that Steve has had hanging under the carport. They're ripening up beautifully and I want to use them for a soup I'm planning. It's a tomato soup and it's perfect for in using these end of season tomatoes. In terms of the short prep, a quick dish for a weekend or a busy week night. Now the recipe I'm going to use today to make this tomato soup was one that I picked up from Australian artist India Flint and it's a family recipe of hers and like many family recipes there's no exact set of instructions so what I've got is at least half an onion here and I'll probably put some more in some butter uh, roughly a cup of polenta and the tomatoes I just picked from under the carport prep first working on the onions. Having prepped the onions, I'm now just going to prep the tomatoes. And the main thing I'm doing is just sort of taking out this top section. They don't need to be peeled. Or have the seeds taken out, they just need to be in chunks. This is a very hearty style soup. It doesn't need a lot of fancy fussing. The butter is melting and it is changing colour a bit. I've got it on a fairly high high heat, just letting it go. You can see the milk solids coming out on top there. I just want to cook this a little bit more, just to let it go a little bit browner. It's hard to see with the foam on top, but the butter is actually um, colouring up quite nicely. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to throw all my polenta in and just stir, 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 stir and keep stirring like crazy. This makes your soup really thick and hearty, just perfect for the cold weather which we're starting to get. Having got to this stage, I'm getting very close to... But tossing my onions in and again just trying to get that a uh, brown a brown color not just that pale yellow anymore right so now it's just the same thing add all that onion in now and they can see this is getting quite sticky the idea is you want that onion before you do anything else you want that onion to go transparent it's quite thick at this stage the only thing we'll be adding apart from the tomatoes is a bit of water. So at this stage we just want to get the onions transparent. It doesn't take all that long. So I'm going to come in now with the tomatoes and that little bit of garlic that I threw in there. And that's the only other flavouring. I'll probably put in a bit of salt in a while. Again, we're trying to cook these tomatoes down just to start them off. And it looks like a pretty horrific mess at the moment it does get better i won't kid you it's not going to end up looking like your tin tomato soup very bright red but that's more than made up for by the flavor of your beautiful homegrown tomatoes and uh, the recommendation is for a judicious amount of water so we're not trying to flood it we're just trying to get it to the point where there's enough water to loosen this off the bottom of the pan to get the rest of it cooked. And it's not going to take much longer after this. I'm just going to add my water. It's just from a recently boiled jug. As you can see, it's already starting to bubble up. And what I want to do now is just leave this all to cook. Probably 15 minutes. 
want the tomatoes more broken down. I'm not worrying about skins. And I think pretty certain that I'm going to need just a, a little bit more water because you will be cooking the polenta out more and that will thicken up and it will absorb a lot of that water. So just keep stirring. This is a sort of soup where you can use what you've got in your own garden. So for example, I have used some onions I bought at the markets. You could use your leeks. You could use your walking onions. Any sort of um, member of the onion family that you have to hand could be used instead of onions in this recipe. Obviously the tomatoes and any other vegetables you wanted to throw in. It's up to you. It's a hearty soup. It's going to lend itself to all sorts of amendments and variations. And there is dairy in it because I've used butter. But I dare say that if you wanted to, you could substitute that for oil to get your polenta happening right at the beginning. So I think it's such a versatile soup. It's really filling. And as you can see now, as it's slowly just ticking over, that the colour is starting to change. We're getting that sort of pinky orange colour coming out from the tomatoes. But boy, is it a tasty soup. So definitely worth the effort for cooking this.